everyone and welcome back to the Weekend Your Way video resources. In this video, we'll be talking about the basic baking methods and how to use the standardized baking recipes you'll find in your textbook. Let's get into it. When we talk about baking methods, there are three that are most commonly used and you can always tell the difference based on the temperature of the butter. First, we have the creaming method where you use room temperature butter, the muffin method where your butter is melted and cooled, and the biscuit method, where your butter is very cold. The temperature of your butter is very important in determining the final texture of your baked goods. Let's dive into a little bit more detail, starting with the creaming method, the most commonly used method of mixing and baking. The creaming method is used for cookies, cakes, buttercream icing, and a variety of other baked goods. The method is always the same. First, you mix your butter with your sugar with a paddle attachment mixed on medium-high speed until the mixture is well combined and fluffy. Then, you slowly add in your eggs and mix again until well combined. Then finally, sift in all your other dry ingredients, but only mix until just combined. You don't want to overmix at this stage, or else you will create too much gluten and end up with a tough product. After your dry ingredients are mixed in, you can then fold any flavoring ingredients, such as chocolate chips or nuts, and then prepare your mixture for baking. If it's cake batter, you'll put it into its pan, and if it's cookies, you'll form them into their final shapes. Next, we have the muffin method, which is for, you guessed it, muffins. This method can also be used for some quick breads and pancakes. The muffin method always uses melted butter, which has been cooled so it's not too hot, and then mixed with other wet ingredients, such as eggs, vanilla, milk, or water. Separately, you combine all your dry ingredients, such as flour, sugar, salt, and leaveners. Then, you add your wet ingredients to your dry ingredients and mix until just combined and put it into your baking pan and bake immediately. The muffin method will always give you a wet batter, which can activate your leavener almost immediately, which means it's very important to get it in the oven as soon as possible to give you the best final product. Lastly, we have the biscuit method, which uses very, very cold butter. To use the biscuit method, you do something called cutting your butter into the dry ingredients. This means that you break the solid butter into smaller chunks and mix it with the dry ingredients until your chunks of butter are about pea-sized, or sometimes smaller, depending on what your recipe asks for. In biscuits, we rely on the butter melting and the water evaporating while in the oven to make the biscuits rise, giving us a flaky final product. Once your butter is cut into the dry ingredients, add any remaining ingredients and place in the refrigerator to chill. It's important to remember that any recipe using the biscuit method needs to be placed into the oven cold to give it the best rise and finished flaky texture. When you start to get into baking recipes from your textbook, you'll notice they only list the ingredients and the name of the method you need to use. This is because the methods are always the same. All that changes is the ingredients. Here's how to figure out what to do with your textbook baking recipes. On the left, you'll see your list of ingredients, both in metric and US weights. Use whichever one is easiest for you. Next to the ingredients, you'll see what we call baker's percentages. These are used in large scale baking establishments to make sure that your recipes will always work, no matter how much you scale them up or down. Flour is generally what the percentages are based on, so you'll usually see the flour at 100% and every other ingredient with the according percentages. This way, it's a little easier to do the math when doubling, tripling, or cutting your batch in half. On the right-hand side, you'll see your mixing method, which we talked about earlier in this video, and the panning directions. In this recipe, each muffin requires 60 grams of batter, which can be easily achieved with a number 16 scoop. Having identical sized muffins means that they'll always take the same amount of time to bake, their cost is always the same, and you won't have any batter left over to waste. And of course, the recipe will include the baking time and temperature. If you forget what the method is you want to use, the textbook will explain it earlier in the chapter. Today, we only covered the three main mixing methods, but there are many more. Here are just a few. Make sure to check out the Bake Shop production chapter in your textbook for more information. And as always, thank you for watching and happy baking!